Hello and welcome to today's qualifications webinar, CIM qualifications to launch your marketing career. My name is Nick and I will be facilitating today's webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate. The presentation will last for approximately 40 minutes. You will be able to send text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the chat box of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation and we'll collect and address as many as we can during the Q&A session at the end. Unfortunately, we don't send slides of the presentation. However, the webinar will be available to watch on demand via our content hub, Exchange, in the next couple of days. I would now like to hand you over to Andy Sharat, who will be today's presenter. Thanks, Nick, and uh, welcome to everybody that's uh, joined us at the moment. Um, yeah, um, today's webinar, we're looking at using CIM qualifications to launch a marketing career. And in particular, we're looking today at the Level 3 Foundation Certificate in Professional Marketing and um, Professional Digital Marketing as the two qualifications that CIM have at this level. In terms of what I'm going to talk to you about today, um, we're going to have a look at who the qualification is for, what the benefits are that you'll get of studying for a CIM professional marketing qualification at level three. We'll have a look at the choices that there are and the modules involved in um, each of the qualifications, what the entry requirements are, the commitment that you'll have to make if you do um, follow this study route, how you can study, and then as Nick's just mentioned, we'll um, take some questions at the end. Um, but I just thought I'd start off giving you a little bit of a background about myself. Um, I'm principal of SPA Professional Academy, which is a CIM accredited study centre based in the north of England. We have delivery centres in Yorkshire and Cheshire, um, as well as offering distance learning. I've been doing that for quite a number of years. Um, in, in terms of it and also involved in the past in other study centres as well. I'm, I'm a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Marketing and a chartered marketer. I'm, I'm also I'm very involved in the Institute and its other, side, other, other elements of it as well as the teaching side because I'm a um, member of the regional boards in actually in both Yorkshire and the North West regional boards sitting on sitting across two of those and in the past I have been an examiner and a senior examiner for CIM although that's something that I um, relatively recently stopped doing. I think what this I'm really trying to say is I've got uh, lots of experience of working with CIM delivering the CIM qualifications um, at all levels I've delivered them from the, the level three right up to the level seven postgraduate um, study levels and been doing this for a long time. I'm very passionate about marketing and CIM as well. So I um, do hope that you decide it is the right route for you to embark on your um, launching your marketing career through the, the CIM qualifications. Um, but it'd be really great to know a little bit about um, those of you that are um, directly watching the webinar at the moment just to know um, first of all, are you currently employed in a marketing role? Would be really great to to know how many people are and and, and aren't. You know, is it something that you are currently doing on that? Um, so we'll just give a moment to see the results of of that. If you could just um, click on the survey there, so we can see it. Okay, that's that's really great. Thanks. It looks like most people that are here uh, um, are actually currently involved in marketing at the moment. So, um, if you could also now just um, do this second little survey, if you are in the in a marketing role currently, how long have you been doing 
um, that role. So we've just got um, three options here of have you been doing it for less than a year, between one and three years, and three years plus. And it might be difficult to define specifically when you started it because people often end up taking on marketing roles, but a rough rough idea is just quite helpful for us to to know and I can maybe tailor some of the content that I'm going to talk about coming up as well to, to relate to it. Right, that's great. Thanks very much. It actually looks like we've got some people with a, a, a bit of experience here of, of marketing. So um, thanks for completing the survey. We've got a bit of a, a spread there, but um, people who have got um, experience of marketing from the professional aspect as well as um, some newcomers. So thanks for that. Um, right, in terms of it, what are we talking about here as a level three um, qualification? Well, um, CIM have this level three foundation certificate in marketing. Um, and so what does that actually mean? Well, it's a level three qualification in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, which means that it's equivalent as a, um, as a qualification to an A-level. It's assessed at the same standard that would be the case for an A-level. Um, it's a, um, approved by Ofqual in um, England and equivalent bodies around the rest of the United Kingdom. Um, but just in terms of the, the level, whilst we refer to it as a level three qualification, actually in Ireland it's level level five and it is a level six in Scotland um, because the awarding bodies in different um, parts of the UK use different levels for it. So um, if you are in either Ireland or Scotland, just to um, make sure you are aware of that. Um, and the, the Ofqual and equivalent um, approval, if you like, for, for the qualification is, is really significant um, because it does demonstrate that it's not just a CIM one, it has this um, external approval from the, um, the, the, the qualifications regulators in the various countries across the UK. Um, so that's the, the level that we've got um, for, for this one. Um, who's it for? Who are the intended target audience? Who's the, the, the most relevant people um, for this qualification? And one of the things about the level three qualification is that it doesn't assume any previous experience or knowledge of marketing. Um, so quite a few people come into marketing or want to get into a marketing role um, without having studied it at all, maybe not even done any kind of study um, in business-related areas. So this qualification works from that principle of, of people not having previous experience or knowledge um, for, for that. Um, it's ideal for an aspiring marketer or somebody who is new to a marketing support role. So if you are just... Um, starting out in a marketing career or not been in it very long um, and wanting to progress your career in marketing, then um, then it is ideal. Um, is it anybody really who's starting out in the marketing industry generally? Um, and the other category of, of people that this qualification really does suit, actually, and uh, I've supported a few people in this position in the past are those who are looking at setting up their own business, just starting their own business, where they are not from a marketing background. But obviously, one of the things that if you are um, running a small business or, or starting a small business, marketing is really important. And this qualification is great for um, giving that underpinning knowledge of, of how to deliver marketing um, successfully. I think I would say one of the great things about CIM qualifications is that they do look at how to actually do marketing in practice. It's not theoretical. Um, we do look at marketing theories and concepts and models, but principally it's all about um, how to apply those, those principles of marketing in an industry um, sector
context for it. But why marketing? Um, what What is it about marketing that um, means that it's an important discipline and why you should want to um, learn more about it on that? Well, I think there's a, a few things in terms of, of marketing. I, from, from my perspective, the fantastic thing about marketing is that it is the link between an organization and the customers that organization has. It's what attracted me to marketing originally many years ago um, when I did a degree in it, is that marketing represents the organization to customers and very, very importantly represents those customers to the organization, understanding what um, those customers want. If we put a, a definition on what marketing is, um, the CIM definition of marketing is this, this element, the management process responsible for identifying, anticipating, and satisfying customer requirements profitably. Um, just to break that down a little bit, a management process. Marketing is a process that is that ideally, and, and to be successful with it, should be managed. So it doesn't just happen, it does need to be a process, which is why gaining a qualification really helps, because you learn about that process. If we take this thing, it's about satisfying customer requirements. Well, that's understanding what customers want and making sure that we deliver at least what customers want. Um, but to do that, we've got to identify customer requirements. The marketing is this thing about understanding customers and identifying what it is that they would like. Also about anticipating what they would like. If we ask customers what they want, they may not really be able to tell us what they might want in the future. So there is an element for marketers understanding um, what is possible, the way industries, markets, environments are going so that we can anticipate what customers will want in the future and be able to provide that. Um, I will just mention the, the, the word at the end of this definition of profitably. Um, it's very easy to think of that in terms of a commercial organisation, that with a commercial organisation they will be aiming to make a financial profit. If you're looking at marketing in a not-for-profit context, so potentially a charity or a public sector area where the, the um, motivation is not to make a profit, um, it's about society or portions of society profiting from those marketing activities. Um, so there's a definition of marketing. That's, that's um, what marketing is about, and it, it does cover a lot more um, than many people who aren't involved in marketing think, where generally, if I, I, I regularly do it, ask people who are maybe starting up a business or something, well, what do you think marketing is? And they talk about um, promotion, communication and things. But actually, to promote and communicate well, we've got to understand a lot more about customers, That um, some of which comes through from the um, definition there from CIM. But why embark on a marketing as a career and marketing, uh, a professional marketing qualification? Um, this is a, a thing from some research that um, CIM have done for it. And if we look at this in terms of a level three professional marketing qualification, um, where people can be working in a marketing role, earning money at the same time as learning, well, an average salary for marketing assistant type level um, positions is um, £22,000. That then qualifies you to move up to the next level, potentially of level four, um, where we might be moving towards implementing practical skills and, and getting much more involved day to day with the marketing um, where an average marketing exec salary is about 25,000, um, with further progression up to a um, level six type qualification, which is equivalent to the undergraduate degrees and gives people the, the skills, knowledge and capability to work at marketing manager level, for which average salaries potentially are 40,000 pounds. 
Um, and then obviously there are higher level roles beyond that, which um, where salaries can increase fairly substantially from that. So marketing financially can be a very rewarding career. And there is research that's been done, and I can't remember the exact figures off the top of my head, but CIM did some research that shows how much over a career somebody with professional qualifications in marketing is likely to earn in addition uh, additionally to somebody without them um, and from memory it was well over a hundred thousand pounds over the course of the career so the qualification is well worth having but the marketing career in itself is potentially financially um, very rewarding what are the career prospects um, that you might get from it well if you've got the professional marketing qualification, it demonstrates a desire to learn to current or prospective um, employers. It shows that you want to learn and improve your own skills and knowledge and capabilities in relation to your marketing career. As I've already hinted with the CIM qualifications, it demonstrates professional competence. The, the assessments prove that you know how to actually do it in a in a job. So you can talk to an employer and say, this qualification demonstrates that I am professionally competent in it. Um, and certainly over all the years I've been teaching CIM qualifications, I've had many examples of students on the courses who've, who've come to me and said, <clears throat> that that qualification or even just studying for the qualification has really opened doors for them. Um, whilst we can't promise that it will get people jobs, cert I've certainly got lots of evidence and experience of, of students that have been told when they've had interviews for jobs that a big part of the reason they were selected for the interview was because they were or had studied for the CIM qualification, so it can really open doors that might otherwise be um, quite hard to to access and um, and be able to open. And it gives that competitive advantage over lots of other people that might be applying for roles. It's a differentiator that shows that you are wanting to learn and have that professional competence. So something that uh, your career prospects are definitely enhanced by having um, one of the CIM uh, professional qualifications. So let's move on now and have a look at the, the level three qualifications that CIM do offer and have a look at um, these in a little bit more detail. So the qualifications are very relevant to current marketing requirements. Um, with contemporary marketing content. We've literally, and what I'm going to talk about in a moment, is a revised syllabus that has just been launched following a review of the roles of marketers at the um, marketing assistant level, the expectations of employers at that level to really understand what's happening, what's changed in those marketing roles, what are the expectations, and the qualifications really do provide this clear kind of contemporary marketing content that equips the learners um, to really understand the current global marketing landscape and be able to work in that um, situation for it. Um, so the, as I said right at the start of the presentation here, um, there is the Foundation Certificate in Professional Marketing and the Foundation Certificate in Professional um, Digital Marketing. So those are the, um, the two options that there are, and I just want to look at how those are, are made up in terms of um, what those qualifications are. So the Foundation Certificate in Professional Marketing has two modules um, that are required to be completed successfully to get the qualification. <coughs> there is a module, um, Marketing Principles, and the second one is Communications in Practice. 
In terms of the foundation certificate in professional digital marketing, you'll see here that we've, we've also got this same module of marketing principles. It's common across both um, options of qualification at this level. But the second module for the digital marketing qualification is digital fundamentals. Um, so that's kind of a, a, an overview for it. I just want to move on and have a look at specific content um, that is included within each of uh, each of those modules. So the mandatory module that is common across both qualifications of marketing principles really is the, the, the title absolutely says uh, what it is all about. It is the the principles of marketing. What is it all about, if you like, taking that CIM definition that I gave earlier and building upon that to really um, understand what marketing is, how it works and how to apply the principles of marketing in a professional um, role for it. So um, it's divided into three units, the first one of which is discovering marketing. So yes, that talks about what marketing is about, the role marketing has in organizations, um, how marketing interacts with other parts of the organizations, and where we, how we got to where we are um, in terms of marketing currently and how it's developed as a, as a discipline and a profession um, to, to really understand and discover all of the facets of marketing. The second unit looks at the marketing environment. Um, I said in an earlier slide that marketing is the link between the organization and its customers. It's about understanding, and this unit looks at, that environment inside the organization that enables the organization to deliver marketing in addition to what is happening outside the organization. So understanding customers, competitors, very important for, for marketers to re understand what uh, uh, competitive organizations are doing, potentially suppliers and other um, elements of the environment that we um, interact with on a regular basis, as well as wider environmental factors that could influence the organization and its customers and other areas such as political environments, social change, technology, which obviously has been very significant to marketers with the development of all of the digital technologies that has a social in, in implication in terms of the way people live their lives, legal changes, economic factors that all influence the organization that we need to understand so that we can um, identify and anticipate those customer requirements to deliver appropriately in the future. The third unit is the marketing mix, um, otherwise sometimes referred to as the, um, the marketer's toolbox. Um, the marketing mix is um, referred to as the seven P's of marketing, and this third unit of the module really explores those seven P's, the tools that the marketers um, have access to to use so the products we offer the price levels we sell them at and um, how we promote them and other factors like that are the is the marketing mix that gets explored in some detail so that when you've completed this module you can understand how what the organization offers at the price level it sells it at and how it communicates it will bring should bring success to the organization if we've got those things right because we understand the role of marketing and the environment that we're operating within. So that's the marketing principles module which as I said is common across both the foundation certificate in professional marketing and the certificate in professional digital marketing. For the um, the, the broad approach to this um, rather than the more focused digital one, the communications in practice module um, is the, the elective that, that provides that. 
communications in practice again the the title says what it, it it's all about it gets into more depth and detail about marketing communications promotion so advertising and all of the other elements of marketing communication but it starts off with an understanding of customers if we want to communicate successfully with our customers we've got to understand our customers so the first unit of who are customers um, helps to to explore the different types of customers that organizations can have so we can look at that fairly simply between the difference of a, an organization in a business to consumer context where its customers are individuals um, as opposed to an organization in a business to business context where its customers are other organizations purchasing for their own use there's then lots of other breakdowns and other categories to those in terms of customers that is important to understand because if we understand those customers we can then communicate in the most appropriate ways for the the, the customers that we would like as an organization so the second unit is communicating with our customers looking at all of the different methods of communication so say advertising public relations um, and all sorts of other things and it explores both the online and offline communication methods with this so just to mention there that obviously the, the alternative elective has a very clear digital focus digital is included as a, an integral part of this communications in practice elective module um, final unit is creating a customer communications plan so that we understand how to not just do a bit of communication and random ad hoc elements of communication, but creating a plan to deliver more effective customer communications um, for, for the organization. The alternative elective module the one that gives the foundation certificate in professional digital marketing has obviously got this more digital focus to it i am um, with again a, a hopefully self-explanatory title of digital fundamentals it looks at the fundamentals of digital marketing what are we talking about when we say digital marketing um, understanding what it really means what it encompasses um, and how how we might define it um, and to get that thorough understanding so that we can apply digital marketing effectively the second unit is digital marketing tools so this starts looking at all of the different tools that exist from obvious things like websites but through all the social media capabilities email is still a very very important digital marketing tool for organizations to uh, for many organizations to utilize we'll look at all of the different tools um, and how they can be used in different ways so is it for specific advertising for um, promoting sales offers of the kind of buy one get one uh, free type um, activities and how we can use the different digital marketing tools across a range of communication um, and similar to the communications in practice module that I just talked about the final unit of um, the digital fundamentals module is about developing digital communications campaigns obviously what it has is this focus on the digital elements of a communication plan and communication campaign um, and, and again just making sure that we aren't doing things in a random ad hoc basis but actually having a clear plan um, for what to do and just to, to mention there of course that making sure that plan has the flexibility to respond because that particularly with digital is is one of the key things that we might need to respond very quickly in real time to things that are happening that digital absolutely enables um, in a in an easier way than maybe offline communications activities 
Um, so yeah, those are the, the, the module choices that you've got. Um, with most study centres, certainly through Spell Professional Academy, the way we do it is that when people sign up, you don't have to make an absolute choice right at the start between the, um, the two electives because we've got this common um, mandatory module of marketing principles. Some people going through that um, decide that they do want to look at the broader approach that the communications in practice will give, as a, whilst others might decide that actually they really need for their role, their organisation, getting a, a, a clear understanding of, of the digital in depth through the digital fundamentals module is the right way to go. So you don't typically have to make that decision before you embark on the qualification. It is something that can be done a little bit later normally. So those are the um, the modules and the requirements for the the, the, the qualification. I um, just wanted to quickly give an overview of the entry requirements and actually to say that there aren't any specific entry requirements for the um, level three qualification, as I said earlier on, that it doesn't rely on having any level of experience um, or other qualifications to, to do this. Um, the only um, reasonably specific requirement that there is is to have the right level of English language capability. Um, so if English isn't your first language, then um, having the um, IELTS academic module with a score of six and a half or its equivalents um, is a requirement because the assessments do all take place in, um, in English language. So that's about the only specific entry requirement there is. Um, the other thing that I did want to mention um, in relation to this, because it's a question many people do ask, is how are you assessed for um, for this qualification? What what do you have to do in terms of that? Well, for the um, marketing principles module, it's an online multiple choice exam. Um, you would agree with your study centre a time and date for taking that exam within Windows that CIM set. Um, and then the, and, and organise the venue with your study centre um, for, for that. And then the, the appropriate time, go along and, and take that exam. Nice thing is it's multiple choice. So the correct answer is in front of you, provided you have done the study and understand the, the, the elements that are included within the syllabus for the module, um, then it, it makes it... Um, eminently passable on that basis, obviously, um, provided you get it. So, um, yeah, a, a good assessment method for the fundamentals, the principles of marketing, if you like, that any marketer should know without being able, without needing to go to a, a book to reference it. Um, the other two modules, the communications in practice and the digital fundamentals modules, are assignment based um, on a given scenario and a, an organization um, and there is actually a, a case study for the communications in practice assessment um, that is used for application of the, um, the, the answers that are provided but they are um, professional based assignment so we, equivalent to the kind of tasks that you may well be asked to do in a um, marketing assistant type role within an organization um, they have a, a word limit on them that is is clearly expressed when you see the brief for those and um, so it is it, you know there are defined limits for that um, but it is a, prof a professional document that many students um, on the courses find is very useful within their organisation at the time and the organisation that they work for, if they are working in a marketing role, can really benefit um, from them taking those assessments. And what level of commitment do you have to give um, in relation to, to your own time for, um, for studying for this? The, the Level 3 Foundation Certificate Qualification typically takes six to eight months. It depends a little bit on when you start and, and when you take assessments. Um, because CIM have assessment sessions which are um, timed for April, July and December each year, 
um, and we would generally always recommend that people work on um, the marketing principles for the next um, assessment session from when they start and then do the, the second module towards the one after that. So it does depend a little bit on your start date. If you've got time to, to do one module before the next one, I mean, for instance, at the moment, we're mid-September, it would be absolutely possible to start in the next week or two, um, maybe a little bit longer, and do the marketing principles for the December assessment, meaning that the, the second module could be done for the April one. So we'd actually be finishing in, if my maths is right, in, off the top of my head here, about somewhere between seven and eight months on that. It does depend a little bit on the start date. Um, while studying, um, the, each module has a 120 hours total qualification time, which means that both the, through the um, learning that you get through your study centre and the, um, the work and study you need to put in yourself and the time to prepare for and um, submit the assessment, um, it's about 120 hours in total. Um, I think a lot of people typically end up doing sort of three to five hours a week, but it obviously it varies a bit by individual, and um, it tends to ramp up a little bit more towards the assessment session. But that's the kind of commitment that you'd be looking at for it. Um, in terms of how you study, um, depends whereabouts you are in the country, but there are... Um, or in the world, actually, there are accredited study centres around the world that can um, support you in your studies. Um, if you visit the CIM website and go to on the qualifications tab, there is a study centre finder um, that will find the ones that are, are close to you. Um, study options typically are face-to-face -face learning, um, sort of classroom style, which can typically be quite interactive, and you get learning from groups. Um, you get you know, typically face-to-face um, -face workshops or evenings or um, weekends is the way most study centres, including my own, um, deliver that. There's blended learning, which might have um, shorter face-to-face -face sessions supported with um, online learning, um, and, and self-study, and then there is also the online learning options where all of the um, support is delivered through online learning modules, which provides much more flexibility because you can study at your own pace and wherever you might be, um, but obviously it doesn't have kind of the group interaction that a face-to-face -face one would. Um, so it depends what, what suits you, where you are, and how you want to study as to, to what's there. But have a look at the options, talk to a range of study centres. I, I would always say, you know, have a, have, a, have a chat to one or two of them, see how they deliver it, and which one is, um, which one feels like it would suit you best for it. Um, so that's how to study. In terms of costs, there are three elements or potentially four elements of costs involved with the um, taking the qualification. There are tuition fees which you'll pay to the accredited study centre that you study with. Um, there are two lots of fees that are paid to CIM, sometimes through the study centres, um, but more often generally directly to CIM, and that is um, a studying member fee, a registration fee to have access to all of the um, resources CIM provide and to provide a, a studying membership level of, um, within CIM. Um, and then there are assessment fees for each assessment that you take. So provided you're successful in both of them, there are two assessment fees um, for that. Details of the studying member fee and assessment fees are on CIM's website. And obviously, each individual study centre sets its own tuition fees according to that. Um, the other element of cost that um, you should always consider is the um, potential purchase of um, recommended study texts for the modules. Um, they can vary in price, and it's always possible um, potentially to buy second-hand copies of, of books. Um, but again, your study centre would be able to provide some advice for you um, in terms of the study texts. 
Um, I just wanted to also have a or kind of finish off really by providing you a few studying tips for for this. If you do go ahead and and choose to study for the foundation certificate or other qualification from CIM, um, it's really good to start out with a clear purpose. What are you doing? Why are you um, pursuing the qualification? Do make sure that you find enough time to study. Um, obviously, face-to-face -face gives you a discipline of going at a particular time, but you still need time for additional studies beyond that. And, and do ensure that you create that time to study and to gain the real benefit from it. Equip yourself to study, to get, get a bit of space, paper, books and things like that, and get ready for, for studying. Make sure you plan your time well. There's an assessment date and make sure you use the time in the run up to that assessment date effectively with a clear plan as to where you need to be and when for your studies. Again, study centres will be able to help you with that. Do read around the subject. Marketing happens all around us all of the time. Um, it's in the news, it's in uh, online and all sorts of things. So read around the subject, see what is happening um, and, and gain all of that experience that the world provides in terms of marketing. You know, if you see adverts on TV or anywhere else, have a think about how does that relate to the, the, the content that you're learning while studying? What is the organisation that's put that advert together trying to convey as a message? Um, why are they doing it? Who are they aiming it at? And things like that. Consolidate your learning. It might have units and learning outcomes within it, but they all link together. Make sure you make those linkages between um, the learning that you've got. And take advantage of your study centre and any tutorial input you've got and working with tutors to learn as much as you can as you go through things. Um, and that finishes what I was wanting to, to cover there. So I'm now going to um, hand back to, to Nick, who um, has uh, hopefully has got the questions there that I will then try and answer. Yes. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Um, right. Uh, everybody else would just like to say, if you've got any questions, there's plenty of time to submit them. We have a few questions, but please feel free to submit anything. If there's any points you need clarifying or if there's a question that's individual to you, please feel free to submit them. So I'll start with one that we do have. What job roles could I consider applying for after this qualification? Um, I would say probably that, that marketing doesn't have clearly defined job titles that apply absolutely across organisations. Um, but a really common one um, that this enables people to do would be a marketing executive role. Um, I know many people kind of uh, organisations might regard it as business development um, in some sectors. So it could be a business development executive as well. Um, but it's kind of a um, once you've got this qualification, you would be able to go for a, um, a, a towards middle level of marketing career, marketing um, roles in an organisation. So not the not the absolute marketing junior sort of thing, but more that middle marketing exec type level is is what I would say there. Thank you, Andrew. Um, another question. Um, I studied marketing at university as part of my business administration degree. Is this the correct level that I need to be coming in on? Um, if you did a degree um, that included um, a, a level of, of marketing, I would actually probably almost certainly recommend the, the level four certificate rather than the level three foundation certificate. Um, level. Um, what would be worth doing, um, there is a diagnostic test that CIM have, um, which I think is accessible through CIM's website, but certainly through study centres. If you talk to a study centre, they would be able to uh, um, give some specific advice and the diagnostic test would also help on that, but probably with a degree with an element of business and particularly marketing within it, um, level four is probably better. Um, rather than maybe relearning stuff that you've already got. 
Thank you, Andy. Uh, next question. How are the hours tracked and recorded for each module? Um, really just by the individual in terms of that. Whilst we talk about the 120 hours um, of guided learning, there isn't a... Um, a specific tracking of that. I think some people probably spend more time than that, um, and some people probably probably do less than that. Um, obviously, the actual learning input, whether that's face-to-face -face workshops or online learning, will take a certain amount of time to go through. But beyond that, the all of the self-study elements that, that are involved in it aren't specifically tracked, and it's not there isn't a minimum number of hours that absolutely have to be done to gain the qualification. It's all down to how well people do in the assessment that actually gets them that. Thank you, Andrew. Um, another question. Can I do this qualification if I don't work in marketing? Yes, absolutely. Um, it, it can be done by people that don't work in marketing. Um, the marketing principles module the, the learning materials you will get from a study centre will give you what you need, along with, as I just mentioned, looking at, at the world around to see what's going on um, will be great for that. Um, there are case studies available, as I mentioned, while talking about it, for the communications in practice modules so that um, there is an organisation to base that, that on. Um, but we've had plenty of people that have done the qualification as a way to get into marketing who aren't doing it and maybe aren't even working at the time. Um, and for, for example, the Digital Fundamentals module, um, you can choose a different organisation. Charities are often very grateful for somebody saying you know, to, to do the work, the assignment around what they do or small businesses that might be local or whatever. So there's plenty of opportunities for that. And there isn't an expectation that people are currently working in a marketing role or even working at all um, when it comes to the, the level three qualification. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I, no more questions at the moment. So we'll just give um, everybody a minute um, to submit one. It could be about anything to do with your study. It could be about the support you receive whilst you're studying. So I'll just give everybody about a minute yeah. to publish one. Okay. Hello. Oh, right. We have a new question. Can I move okay. on to level four as soon as I've finished on this level three qualification? Yes, absolutely. Um, le the level three absolutely qualifies you to, to do the level four, um, even to the extent that there is a little bit of a delay um, between submitting an assessment and um, potentially start uh, and receiving the result. And it's fine to move on to the level four even whilst they're waiting a result for your second module from, from the level three qualification. But yes, it, um, it, it's a direct following on that. Thank you, Andrew. Um, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Um, thank you for presenting this webinar and thank you to everybody for attending today. Once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation and we would appreciate it if you would provide your feedback. On behalf of CIM, thank you for joining us today and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.